Louisiana. For almost three centuries, the people of this state have made their living from the land. And from the water that flowed through it. This balance changed after World War II with the birth of the modern chemical industry. Today, 93 chemical plants stretch along the Mississippi River from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. Together, they account for one quarter of the nation's petrochemical production. BASF AG, the largest German chemical manufacturer and the second largest chemical company in the world, owns and operates the former Wyandotte chemical plant at Geismar, Louisiana. The Geismar plant is the largest of BASF's 80 facilities in the United States. Industry reports indicate that this one plant accounted for over half of BASF's profits in America. Geismar's 260 operators and 110 maintenance workers have been members of the Oil, Chemical and Atomic Workers Local 4620 since the plant was built in the late 1950s. Early in 1984, BASF was in contract negotiations with OCAW. On June 15, 1984, BASF's negotiators abruptly ended bargaining with the announcement that the 370 members of OCAW Local 4620 were locked out of the Geismar plant. A lockout is when an employer refuses to let the employees do their jobs. In, a, in effect, it's a company strike uh, where the, the company makes them withhold their labor. They're willing to work, they offer to work, and the company says no. The lockout has become a favorite tactic among Louisiana employers seeking to destroy their workers' unions, particularly the Oil, Chemical, and Atomic Workers, OCAW for short. The BASF lockout in 1984 was the eighth experienced by OCAW in Louisiana in a decade. Yet nothing in this past compared to the ferocity of BASF's attack on their rights. Company wants to operate this thing as they see fit without having to uh, negotiate with a union or worry about grievances and such. They have said at the negotiating table that if you want to survive nowadays around here, you have to take what you can get. And the company is taking full advantage of that. BASF, every, they like to portray themselves as a good neighbor, but they're taking advantage of all their neighbors. With the union contract, workers had the right to know and the right to say no. Because of the union, OCAW members had protection against arbitrary discipline or dismissal and could question unsound environmental and safety practices. Without union protection, the temporary workers had no such rights. BASF's plan consumes or produces immense amounts of highly toxic chemicals each hour of the day including 12 tons of phosgene per hour, 41 tons of chlorine, 30 tons of ethylene oxide, 35 tons of isocyanate compounds, and 15 tons per hour of hazardous chemical waste. These chemicals are identical or analogous to chemicals used at Bhopal, India, Union Carbide's facility where 2,500 were killed and a quarter of a million injured in a chemical release in December 1984. In Louisiana, the locked-out workers put up billboards to remind their neighbors of the growing danger posed by the lockout. Like Bhopal, the problem at Geismar did not stop at the plant's fence. A series of unprecedented accidents at the plant during the lockout reinforced the union's concern. On April 2, 1986, a major phosgene release exposed six temporary workers. The gas invaded a supposedly impenetrable control room, hospitalizing one operator. Another 21 workers were exposed in a phosgene leak on November 16, 1986. On June 14, 1986, the plant began losing toluene into the air through a heat exchanger. Though they discovered the problem almost immediately, BASF management allowed the plant to run and the leak to continue for 55 hours when replacement parts were found. In all, 16,000 pounds of toxic toluene gas were released during the weekend. 
four miles away, downwind in Gonzales. 20,000 people celebrated in the town's annual Jambalaya Festival. I have lost it, uh, six members of my family here in nine years. And I mean young people with cancer, liver cancer. Six of them. And the, the, we lost a little boy right side the fire station there. S 17 years old, that boy died with cancer. Never smoked, never drank, never did none of that kind of stuff in, none of his, in his life. We've got five places in my parish with groundwater contamination that's threatening my aquifers. You know, what am I going to drink? What are my kids going to drink? What are their grandkids going to drink? Um, to me, this is a very basic, clear-cut issue. It's a moral issue. Um, the earth, the earth is slowly, but being destroyed. But it's definitely being destroyed. Locked out workers like OCAW Safety Committee Chair Roger Arnold depended on Louisiana's environment for food for their families' tables. Especially now, when money was so short. The state of Louisiana is one of the most polluted states right now, as far as I can see in the United States. And uh, I don't want to lose my wetlands. I don't. I, I live in it too much to lose my wetlands. And if I got to fight it to a state capital, well, then that's where we have to fight it at. Well, we got one in there. In June of 1987, BASF's workers marched with Greenpeace in a demonstration at the state capitol in Baton Rouge. A new alliance was in the making, one between OCAW members and environmentalists in Louisiana. The environmentalists are not just a bunch of kooks, that they have a genuine, genuine concern for everyone and that they have a right to be concerned, that we have a right to be concerned, and that we're going to have to clean it up. And that now that we're talking together more, we're finding that the people who work in the plant or uh, are employed in these plants have information that help us because we can tell them about health impacts and it's a very much a two-way street. They're helping us, we're helping them, and we're all getting together. We all want the same thing. We want safe chemical plants, we want safe communities, and we want very healthy families who have the workers at the plant. Together. OCAW and local environmental groups began a campaign to protect the community from BASF's illegal environmental actions. A campaign that reinforced the union's campaign against BASF's illegal labor actions. The campaign began with the collection of information on the environmental practices of BASF and other Geismar area chemical companies. We got what we call the toxic watch program here in Geismar and we go out randomly during the day at night, every other day or night, sometimes every day of the week. We never have the same pattern. And we come out and we pull air samples. Uh, we've detected ammonia at Arcadian, uh, 225 parts per million were at peak. The union's toxic watch produced some surprises, particularly at night. discharges seemed to increase markedly after dark, after the state DEQ inspectors had gone home to their families.
with information gathered in the field and from reports submitted to the state by the chemical industry, the new Labor Environment Coalition began to document what many in Cancer Alley had suspected all along. Well, the attitude now is that we have to do something. You know, I'm 54 years old, and I'm not going to be around that long, and quite possibly they might not catch me. They might not even have anything to do with my death because I'm so old, but I have grandchildren coming up. I have a granddaughter that's just a year old. She's going to have to live here the rest of her life. And uh, everything, we're, we're going to clean it up. We're going to clean it up or we're going to shut it down. They lock us out, they lock, go back and lock somebody else out, and keep on down the line until the big company control the thing, control your labor. We're, we feel like we're winners, not losers. We don't intend to lose. We're going to keep fighting until we win. This union ain't going to go away. We got a very simple message for this company and any other company that tries to rape the workers, fell the land, and destroy communities. We won't forget you, we won't surrender, and we will not retreat from what's rightfully ours.